Okay, so uh, I'm kind of going to go through my, my gear. If uh, SHTF kind of happens or, you know, just my kit, stuff like that. And just start off a little bit about me. Um, I'm in the National Guard, so I know it's not much, but uh, I am a small arms weapon expert. Uh, that course is pretty fun. Uh, it teaches you everything from the M17, M18, all the way up to the uh, Mark 19 and everything in between. So I'm just gonna jump straight into my backpack. Uh, nothing too crazy yet. Uh, I've slowly been filling it up. I don't know why I have this on there. I just put it on there because I had it. Uh, I plan on replacing it with some sort of hatchet or an ax. Um, bunch of contents inside and if y'all want to see what's inside, let me know. Um, but yeah, it holds, it holds a good bit. Not too heavy, but it has everything I need. Probably weighs about 10, 15 pounds. And it's good to get up and get out of here. And next I got my uh, Cry SPC. Um, obviously, as you can tell, I don't have really anything on it. Uh, the Cumberbund was on back order, so it's still coming in. But I got this just about a month ago. Uh, can't really use it yet, obviously, because I don't have anything on there. But my plans for it, because so everything through this is going to have like a priority of uh, what I need versus what I want. And obviously for a plate carrier, you obviously need plates first. I see a lot of guys just run their mags and everything on there first. Uh, for me, myself, I'd rather protect myself and get some plates before I do all that because, you know, I have a battle belt. I have a flick uh, somewhere to store my mags until then. But until that time comes, I'm just going to grab the cummerbund and then the plates for it and then upgrade it from there. And then I got my, my flick or whatever the names y'all want to call it, but it can hold up to 12 magazines. I know, I know that's overkill, but I don't have anything else to replace it with. I mean, I can throw my canteen pouch on there, but I really don't feel like doing that because I can store it in my bag and other options. Um, I could even throw a little water bottle in one of the mag pouches itself. I have two pistol mags. Um, I mean, they slide right in and out. They work good with training. Pretty easy to use. And I'm running some just basic metal mags right now. Obviously, you can see I have the mag pull ones that I'm going to use if something happens. But these are just staged just so I can throw this on, get out the door, and go. Um, don't take too long to throw these in there. But fits pretty well, um, holds everything at the right area if you strap it on right. And when you strap it, I recommend taping it so you don't have flyers everywhere. It don't look good and then it can get tangled up. As for right now, this is how I carry my magazines. Uh, and then as for clothing, you know, I have these few colors of them. Uh, depending on the weather and the situation, the color of my environment. I'm gonna switch them around, switch around my clothing. Um, Eye Pro, Ear Pro. There's just one of my training ones and then just some basic Ear Pro. And so here's my, my battle belt setup. Obviously there's nothing on there. Uh, this is what I'm planning on putting everything on first before my uh, plate carrier. But I just got a little, a little ring on there to hold my gloves for now. Um, and I plan on, you know, obviously putting the standard magazines, your rifle mag, your IFAC, maybe a dump pouch, I'm not sure. Um, just some other items that usually go on there. But this is my current setup. It's pretty comfortable. Uh, I haven't really been able to use it yet, but I've worn it around the house and just testing out how the feel of it is. And um, I can recommend this. The only kind of complaint I've seen so far is how these Molly strips are. They're super tight, which is a good thing, but can be a bad thing. Um, it's hard to really fit a lot of things. Like say, I know this is a weird example, but just for this uh, sort of my my knife that I go to, it's just a Gerber. I uh, can't remember the name of it. Uh, strong arm, that's what it is. Um, I have to actually get a different holster for it for it to fit on this battle belt because it won't fit this way. Just how the it's set up. Um, I could tie it on there, but I want it to be secure. And obviously I'm thinking about getting a smaller one to fit on there and a bigger one to 
just sit on my backpack or even my plate carrier once I come around to it and see if there's enough room. That's my Gerber Strong Arm. I've seen some good reviews on it and it's worked out fine for me. Even though I've just cut boxes and sticks and stuff like that, but still. But back to this, can't complain. Easy on and off. You just press this little tab, slides off, and then you have an inner belt that goes inside your loop and then the Velcro straps to the outside, which is this. And quick and easy. And all around, it seems good so far. Obviously, I won't be able to tell until I put everything on it. My weapons that I'll be going with, uh, I got a Daniel Fence DDM 4V7 uh, with just some standard flip up mag pull sights and then a mag pull uh, sling. Um, as you can tell, there's not much on there. First thing I'm gonna put on there is a, uh, a scout or some sort of flashlight. Because I can already hit, you know, up to 200, 300 consistently with my iron sights, and I'd much rather get stuff like a like a light, uh, maybe a three prong, and even a suppressor before I go with uh, some sort of sight. I want to go LPVO because this is a 16 inch barrel, and I don't want to put a red dot and then just have to take it off. And I feel like a red dot is almost the same. I'm not gonna say it is, but it's almost the same as your iron sight. Um, but I haven't had one jam with this firearm. Uh, I usually shoot 55 grain or 62, mainly 62. Shoots fine, feels good, it's light, 6.2 pounds, I believe. Everything's mil spec, you got your QD, your M lock. Um, so all around, this is a great firearm, and what I'm gonna go with. So obviously you're gonna pay for the name, but I do feel like you get some some extra stuff out of it rather than just your Ruger or whatever you got. It's definitely an upgrade from that, but nothing against Ruger or any other firearm like that. It's just I prefer this one. And the FDE looks pretty cool. And it kind of matches my setup, if y'all can tell. I like FDE. And kind of moving on to my, my sidearm or my secondary. Um, I have an MVP MMP 2.0 uh, Smith and Wesson comes standard 17 round mags. It is clear. Uh, obviously, the trigger is not too good stock, but I do plan on upgrading that and putting an apex on there. I have a TLR 7 Alpha just for uh, obviously to see in the light. Um, but then I got Floyd's Customs, Flared Mag, and two extensions. Uh, my full kind of review and setup of this is on my, chat, on, my, on my page if you want to go watch it. All around, this is a good pistol. Shoots well, feels good in the hand. Uh, haven't had any malfunctions at all, zero. Easy to take down, field strip if you need it. Um, I like to carry this one only because it's my only kind of full size. I know it's the compact version, but it's bigger than my concealed carry, which is a 43X MOS. I do plan on getting a Glock 19X, but that's gonna be way later after I finish on my gear setup, and that's just gonna be for fun, because this works just fine for now. I do carry this. Some days I usually carry my Glock, but if I'm feeling a little extra, I'll carry this even though I don't need the light unless I'm going out at night, and then I'll carry it. It's mainly what I do, but until then, um, this is kind of my, my sidearm, and I just really need a holster for it for my battle belt. Um, after I get my plates and my cummerbund, I'm focusing on my battle belt and then going back to the plate carrier, because everything else, I feel comfortable with hitting my target with the AR and my pistol with just iron sights, so I don't need anything else. And then once I get past all the basic stuff, then I'm gonna come back to it and focus on this and the rifle. Kind of just as an extra, I'm gonna show you all my concealed carry. Like I said, this is a Glock 43X with shield arms, mags. Haven't had any problems with my new ones. 
but the video I made on this, um, the old magazines I had had some jams, but since then, hasn't been any problems. I got a 20 round mag just for fun, and then two flush magazines. But got a 507K on there. Um, I have a full review on this on my page if you want to go watch it. Um, super comfortable, can't complain at all. Then kind of going into my longer range setup. Um, this is just my hunting rifle I've had since I was like 12. My dad actually gave it to me. It's a Chamberton 270. It's a Mossberg. Um, the scope probably needs to be updated. It's banged up and necked up, but it still works fine. Um, it holds three and then one in the chamber. Um, but this is obviously not going to be coming around with me unless I know I'm going to be sitting for a while or whatever the case may be. But I mainly just use this for hunting. But I have a 30-30 lever action and some other hunting rifles, but I, I like the bolt system. Um, a lot of guys think you got to have the, the best setup. But if you think about the situation, the scenario, if you're sitting there and you're concealed and you're hidden, um, you don't need that 15 round. Obviously, it's better, but if you just have a hunting rifle, uh, that works for now. But uh, yeah, this is kind of my current setup, like I've said throughout the video. Um, Nothing's perfect. Everything costs money, so I can't buy it all at once. Um, I got to pick my priorities and figure out what I want. So, start off with the kit. I'm going to do that first and then come back to the firearms because I feel comfortable with this and I don't feel comfortable with that. And that's my main reason. Um, everything else, like food storage, um, water storage, everything else you need. If you needed to stay home, I have. So, I'm pretty caught up on that. Now I'm focusing on this area. The one thing I kind of mentioned, but not fully, uh, the two main things that you do need is ammo for training and then just all around knowledge. Uh, knowledge of your firearm, how to be safe with it, um, and then how to effectively train with it. If you can't train and you don't know your firearm, none of this means anything. But knowledge is key, so make sure that you train up and you go take lessons or you train or whatever the case may be. But in my opinion, that's the main thing that you need. Because it's not about the coolest gear if you got it or the most tactical stuff or the most up-to-date, most expensive, whatever the case may be. I promise you that guy with the, with the Ruger I was talking about, he can, he trains enough and he trains more than you, he, he'll probably take you out if it comes down to it. Um, so even though I've been talking about all my gear and I know it is on the higher end, but I'd rather buy buy once, cry once sort of thing and not risk a malfunction or a breakage of anything. Um, I know there's other reliable companies, but most of the time, if you pay higher dollar, you're gonna get higher quality gear. So that's kind of my outlook on it and my perspective. If y'all think anything else, please let me know. Um, but yeah, it don't matter if you have a even a 22 rifle. If you can hit with it, you can hit with it. it if you hit them in the right spot, it'll take them out. Just get the gear you can afford and stick with it, train with it, know it, and you should be good to go. If y'all like this video, please uh, subscribe, all that cool stuff. But let me know what I need to add or what's, what do y'all what think my priority should be to knock down first and then move on. Uh, I'd like to hear y'all guys' feedback. Thanks for watching.